Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we'll show you how to compute the payback period and the discounted payback period in Excel. I will briefly explain what payback period is, but if you would like to have more detailed information, we have a link in the video description to a detailed lesson, so feel free to check that out. And also we have a nice Excel template for you that would automatically compute uh, the uh, payback period, and I'll demonstrate this in a minute. Again, in, in the video description, you can find a link to download this template. Okay, let's get started. To explain what payback period is, I'm going to use an example. Let's suppose you have an investment opportunity, and let's imagine today this opportunity costs $11,000 to invest. Moreover, each year, the project will generate cash flows of $3,000. And let's say this is a five-year project. Okay, so each year we get $3,000 back for five years, and then the project finishes. Okay. Now, the payback period is the answer to the following question. So for the investor or the manager to, to recover their original investment of $11,000, how long would they need, right? That duration is the payback period. So how long would you need to get back $11,000? And to find that, we will uh, have a profit and loss account, an annual one, right? So at the very start, we are running a loss of 11,000 because we've just made the investment. But one year later, we will actually earn $3,000. So our loss will come down to 8,000, right? One year later, it will come down to 5,000, then to 2,000. And in year four, it will turn into a profit of $1,000. And finally, we'll earn another 3,000 and we will finish with a profit of $4,000. So what will be the payback period in this case? So it must be more than three years because I'm still running a loss and it should be less than four years because at the end of the four year, I'm already running a profit. So basically it's going to be three plus a fractional year. And that fractional year will depend on the remaining balance from the previous year, which is 2000. So this is the loss I still need to recover. And in year uh, four, I will get 3,000 in an entire year. So if it takes, um, if I earn 3,000 in a year, how long would it take me, for me to earn 2,000? And that's, of course, two thirds of a year. So it's 2,000 divided by 3,000. So the payback period for this project is 3.67 years. Okay. I would like to show this to you with uh, the Excel template we will provide as well. It's very easy to use and quite interactive. All you really need to do is simply to enter the cash flows and the template will do the rest. Okay, so 11,000 here, then 3,000. As you can see, it's automatically updating. Another uh, 3,000, another 3,000, another 3,000. Remember, it's a five-year project. And already automatically it calculated the payback period as 3.67 before I even entered the final cash flow, which of course won't make a difference. Okay, so the payback period is 3.67. Now let's move on to the discounted payback period, but let's understand why we need that. Now, the reason we need a discounted payback period or the reason that is better is because this takes into account the time value of money. If you look at these cash flows, they are all in the future, right? So here we ignore the time value of money when making these calculations. And this matters because if you think about it, you have 11,000 to invest, which you can put in this project, but you could also, for example, put in a bank and earn interest on it, right? And if that interest is a lot higher, then actually, you know, this project is not as desirable as it looks in the first place, right? So the discount payback period handles that issue. 
What it does is that when calculating the payback period, it considers not the nominal cash flows, but their present values, okay? So for the initial cash flow, this doesn't matter because it is basically at the start, so it's now, not in the future. But starting from year one, we will discount cash flows. And for that, we will need to assume a discount rate. So let's assume a discount rate of 10%, so 0.1 or 10%. So the first cash flow will be uh, 3,000 discounted at 10%, right? And we need to uh, fix the cell. Oops, sorry. I wanted to use F4, it didn't work. And this will be raised to the power of the time period which is one in this case. Okay, so this is the present value. Let me actually format these cells a bit nicer with two decimals. So this is the present value of this first cash flow. The second one, third one, and so on. And as you can see, the last one has a much lower present value because it is discounted five years back at the 10% interest rate. But now I can basically copy paste the same information to find the discounted cash flow. Again, let me format these a bit nicer. Here we are. So we can see that for four years, I am not recovering my initial investment, but in the fifth year, I finally got a profit, right? So in this case, the payback period is actually going to be between years four and five, because this is the point where I'm switching from loss to a profit. So it's gonna be four plus a, a fractional year, and that fractional year will again be based on the remaining balance from the previous year, divided by uh, the cash flow received in the following year, okay? And that turns out to be 0.8. So the discounted payback period is 4.8 years, which is longer than 3.67 as expected. So the uh, discount payback period will always be longer than uh, the uh, payback period. And again, let's maybe uh, verify this with our template. So the only thing you need to change here is the discount rate, right? So if it is 0%, you can see that the solution is identical. But if I make this 10%, this should change to 4.8. So let's see if that happens. And here we are. So the present values have updated and the discount payback period has turned out to be 4.8. The last thing I would like to do is to show this to you in a, in a graphical manner, right? To, to help you better understand the difference between uh, these two uh, concepts. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a line chart to depict both the payback period and uh, the discount payback period. So let's select the data. So first we have, let's say, the payback period and the values. Oops, the values are our profit loss values. Okay. This is the first series, and let's edit the category labels. Okay, and then I'm going to add the second series, which is the discounted payback period. Okay, discounted payback period. And again, I'm going to add. Um, profit and loss here. Here we are. So the blue line is the payback period, and the orange curve is a discounted payback period. As you can see, the blue line intercepts zero around 3.67. So this is the payback period whereas it takes longer for the second line to cross zero, which is quite close to five, 4.8 years. Okay, 
That's all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you found it useful and looking forward to see you in the next video. Bye for today.